What's going on guys, Vic BP back with another Game Case Arcades video official tutorials for Robbie on the next couple of videos on this one. First, let's talk about basic startup and all that. So real quick, Robbie, uh, for your request, Robbie does want um, Hyperspin to start once the PC starts up. So right now, PC is off. I'm going to turn it on. And while it turns on, I'll just start talking and stuff. So uh, again, Robbie, just keep in mind, I do have it set to a task, schedule task. So PC boots up very fast. I mean, we could even do like a quick timer right now. Uh, probably about, I would say, about 12 to 15 seconds to boot. But it will take about 30 seconds um, after the initial login for Hyperspin to start up. That's just how schedule tests are, okay? So right now, as you can see, we are on the desktop. You do not want to use any keyboards and mice. That is A-OK. -okay. I do suggest that you do have one just kind of close and handy, just in case you want to navigate, you know, main menu and all that. But in 30 seconds, once it kind of boots up, Hyperspin will automatically boot. On that note, I just want to discuss real quick about your PS4 controllers. Um, you got two of them. Be sure you do have the PlayStation dongle in. I will show you what USB port I put it in. I don't know if it's going to affect where or what port it's in. As you can see, we do have Hyperspin up. I'm going to see right now if my Elgato is going to pick up. Hold on. All right. Sorry about that. I didn't have your um, basically computer set for the audio for the Elgato. So you always want to kind of double check that beforehand because I do know that you stream. Uh, so going back to what I was talking about with the PlayStation controllers, which is why I turned on my lights. Um, remember, you do have the PlayStation dongle. I'll send you a picture of exactly what USB port I have the dongle in. I do not believe it matters, but just to be safe, might as well copy it how I have it. So I'll send you a picture of that. Uh, but again, the PlayStation dongle can only connect to one PlayStation controller. This is a big deal, just so you understand it. Player one is always going to be the silver controller that you got me. It's got like an off silver, not the black. Black will always be player two. So in kind of nerd talk, um, your PC recognizes the DualShock PlayStation dongle. It recognizes this controller as an actual DualShock 4 controller. DualShock 4 controller is always player one. It recognizes this controller because this is connected via the Bluetooth on the motherboard. This is recognized as a wireless controller. So just keep that in mind. The black PlayStation controllers are player two, and the silver one is player one. So as you can see, basically, Hyperspin does boot up. I have the controller off, but basically, once you kind of hold down the PlayStation button, it will turn on, and you don't need to reset Hyperspin. It automatically does figure it out that this is player one. Um, so basic stuff, just real quick so you understand it. The X button is basically your enter so if i wanted to go in here you have to hold it down for about three seconds it'll bring you into the wheel for you to exit escape back i have it always set to the playstation logo a couple of seconds and there you go so it is a three second press if you just tap it nothing happens you have to hold it just like that i have it set like that many reasons why honestly for the arcade wise so again if you do want to go back you just hold the playstation button and there you go. You could use the D-pad to navigate. Very easy stuff. So again, just kind of doing this as a basic tutorial. With this though, I'm going to be going into MAM, MAME Arcade. And uh, we're going to be discussing the Wiimotes on this tutorial. Okay. First things first, let's just talk about MAME, MAM. Everybody laughs at me when I say it. Uh, on my wheels is basically three versions of MAME. Not versions, it's just kind of simplified database list. Um, your first one is all ROMs. You can see it right there. These are all the ROMs. You're talking 7,300 ROMs. So you will find a lot of duplicates. You will see a bunch of names. The reason I have this is because some games didn't really go over to the other list, which is the main ROMs. This just gives you the whole library because you have it. So you have your all ROMs. If I hold the PlayStation button, I do have this one, which is main ROM. So this one, you're not really going to find a lot of duplicates. This is a very clean kind of thing. So as far as the on these two wheels that I'm talking about, you're going to find all your arcade games. So Metal Slug, The Simpsons, anything, all arcade, you're going to find it. Uh, so for right now, I'm going to just launch Metal Slug. You long press X. 
I usually let it go once you see the loading screen and you're ready to go. PlayStation controller, just like how you requested it, the share button is the coin and start is start. Now remember, arcade buttons aren't always the same. You could use either the D-pad or you could use the analog stick. I'm using Joy to Key to make that work. And basically, again, with kind of Metal Slug, you're going to have to just kind of play around with the buttons to figure everything out. So if we just play a little bit. Kind of did it in a way that you wanted it where X is to jump, square is to shoot. Again, not every arcade game is the same. But the real reason I'm bringing this up right now is to show you in case you did want to adjust controls. Um, very simple. You're in the game. Let's say you're in this game. You go, Vic, damn, man, I wish the jump was like the C button. Cool. You got to grab a keyboard for this. You literally take it in game. You press the tab button. And you'll literally go down with the arrow keys to the input this machine. And as you can see here, you can see a bunch of the controls here. So you do have like player one start, the coin, button one, button two, and so on. Okay. So basically with this, you could adjust accordingly if you wanted to. Everything again is already set up. There's no need to worry about anything. This is already set. And again, player two is already set. No worries. So if you wanted to adjust player one, for example, you press enter and then you press the actual joystick button you want to press. Right now, it is showing player two as empty. That is because I don't have player two controller on. Um, I do have to charge this controller, which I'm going to bring later on. I'm going to discuss something about that with charging. Um, but once you're done, you just press the tab and then you're back. So whatever you kind of adjust and play, you have it. Once you're done playing, you hit the PlayStation button and you're back into the menu. Again, easy stuff, basic stuff. I do want to kind of load up... Um, uh, Let's just do like Street Fighter. I'll do like a Super Street Fighter. Um, again, you did want Tekken and um, Street Fighter. It was mainly Tekken, right? It was another game. I think another fighting series. It's been a while. Um, but you basically wanted some unique button inputs for each certain game, which is why I'm letting you know about the MAM kind of setup that we're doing now. You literally go into it. You can press tab. Input this machine is the biggest thing. You want to do this machine. That means this game. Okay, as you can see real quick, blue is like default. This is how I have it set. Anytime you see gray, it means you changed it. So for example, with Street Fighter, because you did want it this way where you wanted like punch, 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 or whichever way you wanted it, I had to adjust the default on it. So as you can see, anything gray means I already adjusted it. So just kind of giving you, again, some quick terms and all that this way, in case you did want to adjust or change button configs, you can. I'll be honest, Street Fighter, I have like 200 versions because it's, again, it's USA, Asia, Brazil. It's all there. My main ROMs one, the folder that we're in right now, the wheel we're in, it's set for you fine. In case you did go into the all ROMs, you might deal with some games not working correctly because I didn't do all the ROMs, but I did the main ROMs. I know that makes no sense, but I'm pretty sure you understand what I'm saying. So, again, with this game, you insert coins with the share button. We got the player one start. And again, you could use the D-pad or you could use the analog stick. Again, using joy to key for that. So, you know, for example, me, when I'm doing arcade or Street Fighter, I do like the joysticks, meaning I like the analog sticks. Usually sometimes it's easier to hit like a Hadouken. But I know how you are, like classic me, uh, you know, when it comes to like NES, um, you know, the D-pad is the way you really got to play everything so again squares punch triangle is medium punch and then we did r1 so real quick for viewers robbie's request basically not even utilizing l1 and l2 everything mapped to the r1 r2 so strong kick on r2 strong punch on r1 um again this is just how in-depth we get i get you tell me what you want i'm gonna make it happen so pretty cool. Again, as far as MAM Arcade, MAME Arcade, it is a simple button press to exit out because the emulator is set that way. Um, but again, as far as inside hyperspin and other emulators, I do have it set to long press PlayStation. We are on the subject of MAME Arcade. I do want to bring up now the idea of the Wiimotes. Wiimotes, they're very cool. Wireless is awesome. Sometimes a little bit could be not tedious, it's just something to, to remember. So I'm going to go down 
And the big thing I want to stress with this is that you do have gun games. Robbie, buddy, whatever you do, I highly suggest don't do it because it's not configured. Do not launch a gun game inside of this, the all ROMs or the main ROMs. The gun games is running a whole different MAME emulator. It is configured specifically for these Wiimotes. So if you are looking for an actual shooting game, you're going to load it up in the gun game. So what's pretty cool about these Wiimotes is that it is actually marked as like a mouse. Uh, big thing that we are going to do MAME, and we have to make sure that it's set to channel 2 on the May flash bar. There's only two settings you need to know. Mode 2, mode 4. Mode 2 basically makes it look like an actual mouse. Um, pluses and minuses to that, basically your trigger is left click, uh, and I believe your A button is your right click, and you got the aim. So basic stuff, easy stuff. But again, with this, um, you do have it, Oh, actually, cool. Look at that. I could... Oh, yes. So, going into that, I just kind of mind-blown myself. When it's set to the mouse mode, which is channel 2, mode 2, your D-pads are set as arrow keys. So, it actually works with hyperspin, yes and no. The plus, that's actually enter, which could work in hyperspin. Your biggest thing at the Q mine is that your minus sign, this minus, is escape. Unfortunately, there is no way to remap it in mouse mode. So just be careful while you're playing. If you do hit the minus sign, it's going to escape out. It's going to exit the game. So just keep that in mind. Um, I always, uh, I'm a big fan. Oh, you were telling me a game. Um, I actually started playing it and then I had to stop. It was that torture game. Um, but I'll just load up like Carnival, for example. So if I press the plus, it actually launches it. So I'm using the Wemo right now to navigate and such. So as you can see right now, I do have player one is blue. And I'm going to now make sure that I have my second. I do have my second May flash bar plugged in. So I do have both May flashes in. And I put on player two. And now we have player two. So as you can see, player two is the red. Player one is the blue. Um, so big thing, I've never done it when it comes to arcade cabinets. But I do have your Wiimote set as start is the trigger. You must pull the trigger. Um, that's mostly it. The up on the up on the D-pad is your coins. So as you can see, it does insert two coins because I have player one and two coins set to this D-pad up. Coins doesn't matter. It's all about actually starting. So right now with the blue, if I pull the trigger, it started it. So again, pulling the trigger is player one. Again, I'm going to try to keep it a little bit. Far back. Now, I do have the May flash bar set under the screen. I'm going to bump up the volume a little bit. And they do register very well. So if I do sit back, I just can't because I have like my headset right now. Reload is with the A. So again, I'm just personally too close. So I would really be far back. But as you can see, they work. I mean, from Mame Arcade, that is some awesome stuff. So right now, I have to insert coins so I can take player two or player one, press up on the D-pad, pull that trigger, and now I am player two in this. Big thing is, though, with Mame Arcade, you do need both May flash bars set to mode two, and you need both May flash bars on. So again, I'm going to kind of do this awkwardly. Again, I'm, too, I'm close, only because my headset can only go so far. So just keep that in mind for people that are going to be like, oh man, your May flash bar doesn't connect. You do want to make sure there's nothing in the way. Um, I basically was had a keyboard in the way. So again, let's see my blue. Again, it is not a May flash bar issue. It's not a Wii issue. I am just way too close right now for this to actually really play well. Again, I am too close. As you can see, the blue one is kind of jumping, but I'm too close. Basically, once you are done playing, you could either keep... Actually, quick note, player one uh, PlayStation controller is still player one, so you could actually hold PlayStation button and it'll exit out. Or if you are using the Wiimotes, you hit the minus button and it escapes. Just got to be careful because, again, player two also is basically the same as player one, meaning it's the same keyboard inputs 
So if player two hits that minus button, that's it. You exited the emulator and stuff. That's really all I wanted to discuss as far as MAME. Uh, again, just wanted to give you an idea of how to change inputs in case you did want to change inputs. The last, 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 last thing about the PlayStation controllers. Um, if, I mean, they are rechargeable. You have to charge the battery, obviously. I highly recommend that you do not charge the battery while you're actually playing. Um, I have the, the, the actual controllers didn't come with chargers, just letting you know, Robbie. Uh, I had a PlayStation 4, so I have like my charging cable. Um, if I plug the charging cable into your computer and plug it into the controller, it brutal. I'm going to say it, it brutally messes up hyperspin. It changes the whole controller count. Um, so you could use it to charge, but if you're actually playing, do not play and have it plugged in to your PC charge. Um, again, with it plugged in, it changes the whole, like it changes the player number and all that. I probably suggest charging the controller, you know, while you're eating or doing something else. Don't charge the controller and play at the same time. Um, other than that, for now, this again was a little intro to MAME um, and intro to the system booting up. If you wanted to exit, you hold down the PlayStation button. And again, X is your enter key. Now, the big thing is, again, you do kind... No, actually, you don't. I'm sorry. Now, if you wanted to shut down the system, you could literally just press the big power button that's on the actual tower, and that's it. It takes about maybe five seconds to shut down. So, again, a beast of a PC. Tutorial number one, MAME and the Wiimotes for MAME.